or um, infamous toxins in some ammonitas, like the destroying angels in the death cap, and 95%, 90-95% of all mushroom fatalities in the world are caused by one small group of ammonitas, the destroying angels, including the death caps. And weirdly, we didn't really have very many found this year. Here's one death cap. Um, I'm one, des one destroying angel here, probably Amanita subaliacea. Uh, the deadly gallerinas also produce amatoxins. Some um, lepiotas produce amatoxins, and there's, I think, even a couple other groups. But of course, the amanitas are most notorious. Most of the amanitas we hear are totally safe to eat and edible, but the destroying angel group is real infamous for these and, and cause deaths. So, up until now, to test for amatoxins, there was a test that's totally not reliable, very hard to perform. You basically had to be an expert in performing the test to get very good results. And it was based on um, chemistry developed by the famous Wylands, who studied and knew everything about <coughs> hematoxins and cyclopeptides and how all of this worked. Their work was then modernized and updated by a very good friend of mine named Jonathan Walton at Michigan State University, who just died two years ago. But right before, actually, he, he finished right before he died, but his book didn't come out until after he was dead on uh, the latest stuff of emotoxins, which um, you can track down that book if you like. Anyways, um, so emotoxins, how they cause death is by blocking uh, one part of messenger RNA polymerase enzyme, which transcribes RNA, stops transcription of DNA, basically stops function of cells that have a lot of uh, cell division or protein production. So organs are typically targeted like the liver and the toxins don't really kill you. They just destroy function of your organs. What kills you is uh, loss of function of that organ. So no liver, no detoxification of your blood. So you're, uh, you're violently ill and in a coma for quite a long time, but then totally recover. And then a day or two later is when you start turning yellow and your eyes turn yellow and then you die because of uh, jaundice and bilirubin and stuff like that building up in your own system. So to do this test, this uh, uh, Whelan test required very old-fashioned style paper, including newsprint and, and not much else anymore is useful. It has to be very much cellulosic paper. So you'd have to squeeze uh, the ammonita juice drops onto a single place on the paper to kind of concentrate it and then you uh, let it dry and then you add Con concentrated sulfuric, uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid, and uh, look for a color change, and it doesn't really work all that well. If you have the Ammonitis uh, North America book, shameless plug of my book, you can see um, what a positive test looks like. Results in some blue spots. So I could, use, I could use the table of contents or the index, but because it's my book, I should know where stuff is, but clearly I don't. So, okay, so on newsprint, and yeah, I know I'm a huge Clemson fan. It just so happened when I did this test, the headlines read, Clemson wins national championship. Uh, but you can see the blue dots there. So this is great if it works, but it doesn't always work quite this well. The dots start fading when it's the uh, sun's beaten down and it's hard to interpret. Lo and behold, a better test, this was the only test for like a century. Lo and behold, a better test came along by a scientist at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Candace Beaver, her name is spelled P-E-B-E-R, and her test uh, is an antibody test, which is way more sensitive, and this is what we'll be doing today. It's just like a preg home pregnancy test. Her test is so sensitive uh, the test wasn't even really available and marketed yet, and she wanted me to try it out. So I was in San Francisco and tried it out, that's why I took that picture. And I was totally astounded because it finds and detects extremely small amounts. In fact, it's uh, useful for detecting emotoxin in blood and urine. So you can imagine it's, that's way less parts per million than in the mushroom itself. So to do this test, we'll see how well it works. So we have a fresh destroying angel here. And I also have a dried Ammonita ocreata from California here, which is Western Destroying Angel. And 
I can tell um, the Strong Angel group of Ammonites just by the smell alone. That's weird. Through a plastic bag, they have a, they have totally. a, they have a deadly smell. That's right. And so then we can use something as a pos as a negative control. What should we use? Another non-toxic ammonita or something else or a chanterelle? We can use another ammonita if you want. Yeah. Okay. So we can use, we, we saw lots of these. This is maybe the most common ammonita we saw all weekend. So we use one of these. So here's what we need to do. So we need an assistant. We, oh, you're the assistant. Am I? Yeah. What am I so, doing? Okay. So, and we need a marker. Can someone throw a marker or so we don't... Forget which is which. There's a sharpie in my bag right in front of you, Mark. Patrick, you have a pin over there. The basket. Never mind, he's got one. So we'll label these one, two, three. So one will be one will be the fresh destroying angel. Two will be the dried destroying angels. Three will be the negative control. And um, the, the test costs tremendous amounts of money. Unfortunately, the most important part is table salt. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So these were given to me before they were starting to be marketed. They now are marketed with table salt in them. They don't tell you table salt, but it really is table salt. So, so okay. how much does it cost? The test, uh, I forget how much they cost. But, well, no, you can buy them from the website. How recent was this? Uh, these were shipped to me in the winter. Uh, just like a year ago. And these were shipped to me in the winter. You can buy them now. Uh, the other beauty part is they're stable. So like a hospital could buy them and have them sitting on the shelf forever. You know, they don't break down. So we have test kits here. And let's label these. Also, one, two, three. And okay, so let's do the test. So you'll be amazed how little of a piece we have. We need a knife. We need a dry bag. Here, I got a knife in my pocket. Yikes! So pop open the pop open the top of number one. It is open. Okay, so oh, this is kind of dirty. You mean cut myself again? So, so the piece has to be incredibly small to fit inside of the tube. So that's probably too big. So, so put that in number one. Okay. Yep, it's in there. Okay, so put this in number three because it's negative control. This one's also, this one's totally edible. Okay, and two was, oh, where's the dried ocreatas? Uh, it's right in front of me. Yep. Why do you have so many of those in the Yeah, you know, is this still being filmed? Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Carl soon will going to die, but from sniffing me. You can tell us that's So, left it in the number two. So, you see how super tiny this piece is. Yeah. Let's hope this works. Now, oh, um, can someone run and get some tap water just out of the tap? I, I got it. Yeah. So the test tube needs to be about half full, so we can shake, shake, shake. And then, tell me what's about half full. It is. Okay. Then once they're half full, I will okay. use, of course, separate pipettes to drop, drop, drop. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, so, oop. So close them up and shake and have pass them around so everyone can shake one for 60 seconds. Each person shakes for 60 seconds? Yeah. Oh. So you saw how tiny the piece of mushroom that was that was used. So it's not like you use like mushrooms and you scrunch them down. Extremely small amount. Are you still shaking? Yes. Okay. Oh, you didn't have one broke. So then from this, I'm going to take three drops of the liquid. Three drops of the liquid and put on the test. And then we'll, we can watch the liquid being pulled up. 
So we'll drop it in the little well. We'll watch the liquid being pulled up through capillary action. And if we get two red bands develop in like a minute or two, then that's a negative test. One red band in a slightly different spot, positive test for emotoxin. Yep. Okay. That does it. Okay. Which, which number do you have? One. How severe? Like how potent? Use a drug in or not Yeah. Three drops. <laughs> Says you. Says me. I would know. <laughs> She's filming her. Right. Explain more. One, two, three. Here's your next one. Should we write down which was which? Yeah. This is two? Yep. This is, this should also be poisonous. One, two, three. Okay. So you can see, so you can see, as the liquid's moving up, it's being carried up the well, moving up the yeah, three drops. One, two, three. So while this is developing, this, this, uh, there, there's several lessons probably here. No mushroom, even the most deadly mushroom, is so dangerous you can't hold it with your hands and touch your eye, touch inside your nose, take, taste a little piece, uh, talk about it, think about it, read about it. No mushroom is that dangerous. There was a discussion online of people saying pro and against this. As to when you like dry the whole bunch of them on the dryer and the smell emanates into the room and stuff. Uh oh, false positive. False positive. Ooh. Do you think it's because? Do you we think it's because? We used the dropper, I think, on the on the number one, and then we used it again. On, no, 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 it didn't. It could have been. What about my knife? What about the knife? We used the same touched. knife on all three. Oh, well, let's get more out. We just start science. Yeah, the knife was. So someone, someone that's not touched the, yes, yeah, someone that hasn't touched the mushrooms at all, a naive hand, needs to come out of the woodwork. With a naive knife. Yeah, we need a clean knife. It's extremely sensitive, you know, so we very well could have confounded the results. Actually, let's, Andrew, why don't you go ahead and... Yeah, that's the, that's the clean one. Yeah, I would definitely want to do that mushroom again, not like any other negative control. I'll use the same Just this one, control. okay. Yeah, I haven't touched any of those. So that's Did you touch one. anything? No. Okay. I just washed my hands. You open this up. And I'm going to pour this in your hand, and you sprinkle a fair bit of salt in the tube. And then have Andrew press the thing in there. Let's put the yellow on the night. That's enough, right? Little piece. Little piece and half full of water. Shake it, shake it. One minute. Yep. Yeah, so this uses antibodies, so. You know, they attach on to very small amounts. I think uh, supposedly like so, something like one, uh, one per 1,000 or one per 100,000 parts per million it can detect. Supposedly pretty sensitive. Also says to wear gloves when you're doing this and not necessarily protect your hands, but so you don't contaminate stuff from like mushrooms you've been picking, which obviously I didn't do. So pretty easy. It doesn't even mention You're that. You're saying that when you dry up your mushrooms, <laughs> like they have the needles in your dryer, in your food dryer, the smell that comes out, that's not going to kill you? Or Absolutely. You know? So the, um, the death rate of deadly ammonitis is about 50% in this country. You know, and when I was a kid, when we read about it, it was like 100%, but it's not. It's maybe 50%. It's probably the lower in Europe. Yeah, because now they have, uh, you know, they can re replace your liver or kidneys. Or uh, well, you can get treatment, but also at the same time, we also just know from better data from more and more people that have accidentally eaten them, we know that you eat them a lot more often. Okay.
Okay, three drops on. I'll put a negative. Um, control. Negative control. You know, usually the way these assays are configured is two bands is usually a positive. The lower band being where the toxin was captured and the upper band being positive control. Um, well, I mean, you can have antibody tests do one of two ways. You can have them be a positive test or a negative test. You can have it block a site so the reaction does not happen, yeah. or it can add to a site and cause a chemical reaction. Yeah. So um, while this is developing, uh, I can just tell you, so... Watch for the fluid to soak into the strip through the rectangular window. Isn't it cool? Watch the video I made, and certainly here, showing the parts of the kit, how to use them in the most magically the development of a positive figure four. I think it just started negative to. negative figure five. Oh, yeah, now it's pulling it down. Positive that... test, only one red line. Okay, negative test, two red lines. It detects uh, less, than here comes. less than 10 nanograms per oh, minute. There's the line. A man of 10. Less than 10 nanograms per mil. So that's how sensitive it is. We got a negative. And you would put blood in the same test? You put blood, blood, blood or, or urine? urine. Okay. Let me just brace this standing up so you can see it more easily. So. You just ate some, the two. Well, clearly, incredibly <laughs> sensitive if we tainted it on the first test. That's incredible. Maybe. If we get one band again after being super duper careful, then it means that, well, maybe they don't work as well as we, as, as advertised. Uh-oh. Four. Maybe you're wrong. So when I did the test in California, the very first oh, time Oh, no, I, I think it, there's going to be two. Really because this, it's appearing, sorry, low down. See? There's a faint one appearing, and I think I see another one. <laughs> Who's been in this situation before? Pretty yep, here comes the second one. Yeah, there's a second one. Maybe. So if if this test that we did now a fourth negative control shows that my previous negative control showed us a positive simply because using that knife it picked up such tiny amounts. That's really astounding, frankly. Well, Definitely got two, 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 two negative two bands. Wow, yeah. that's that's negative pretty amazing. Let's make a bleed. It is yeah. cool, yeah. That's pretty amazing how sensitive that wow. is. I literally contaminated it just by using just my hands knife. and the knife. Hands and the knife, yeah. That's yeah. astounding. Wow. Yeah. So a positive test is one line, and right. a negative test is two lines. Yep. So there's no, they're getting lines. thicker and more That's visible. totally... I'm just using the knife and hands. I was yeah. really impressed when I saw this performed in, you know, in California. I was really astounded. That's incredible. From such a small piece. This is even twice as astounding that I could easy, so easily contaminate it detect such a mouse. Yeah, especially when up to now I'd always been doing this newspaper test, which is just kind of like, I kind of think it is, but I'm not sure if it's blue. Plus the one that I know is negative, that kind of looks blue too. So this is so much which, which, better. Which tells me, it's like for example, if somebody, like somebody ate more than you ate, and they think somebody else said, oh, you just ate the bad one. Maybe like if the test is available, emergency can do the test. Oh yeah, it's in your blood. Yeah, and then they can do preventive before before your kidney fails and before you. Yeah, and I don't know how quickly it gets well, into your blood, but but part of how the poison works is so it circulates through your you know you digest it goes through your blood, and your liver gets blasted. It keeps circulating, keeps blasted again and again because you you can't break it down. So your liver that's why the liver is fails most often. Your other organs can be targeted too, your heart, kidney, anything. The liver is what usually is destroyed because it keeps getting blasted over and, and over and by your urine. Test and urine, fresh urine from somebody who has digested maybe urine. Do you never spit so, out? Like it just stays? Uh, that I don't know how long it stays in your body. It's, I know it's totally gone. I think in like 12 hours. But, but that's when you're really suffering the symptoms because your liver is shot. So if the if you if the hospital suspects early on that you ate deadly ammonitis, like if they 
the, the person's vomiting and has like blood coming out and extreme diarrhea. What happened? Well, I ate some mushrooms and I'm suspicious of them. They can test the mushroom right then and there. Then they, what they can do is lots of irrigation in lots of liquid in your stomach. They can pack your stomach full of charcoal. They can even give tetracycline. They think that maybe that helps. But mostly it's just the irrigation, having the, the patient be calm and under supervision. If you're at home and you get violently ill and nothing happens after the vomiting and the diarrhea stage, you end up going, slipping into a coma for like 12 hours. And then when you wake up from the coma, you feel totally fine because the poison's out of your system. But that's when you vote, it's too late. You, you then have to have a liver transplant. So a, a very famous case that happened just a few years ago was this author who wrote... Um, yeah, all those like the the horse whisper. Yeah, horse whisper. Yeah. So he and uh, his wife and another couple were in the UK picking what they thought were chanterelles, when in fact they had some Cortinarius rubellus, which also has amatoxin. And so, to the two of them had to have a liver transfer uh, transplant, and two will be on dialysis for the rest of their lives. So all four had you know such bad damage to their liver. And they didn't know, so there's, it's, there's nothing that can be done now. But had they known when they went into the hospital, they, just simple stuff like lots of irrigation and uh, charcoal and supervision and stuff like that could help. So how much do you have to eat for the Well, that's, I mean, nobody knows. So I think if, if uh, Shall we try? What, what, is, what is known is there was a, uh, there was a whole family that all but two people allow a monk family in Cleveland, all but two people got wiped out, and they think maybe just one destroying angel was in their mushroom soup. So I was called from the hospital, and they were sending me pictures, and so I said, well, there's a bunch of mushrooms in here. And the person said, yeah, there was one of those, so I showed them a picture. And so it was the best thing I could tell, it's just one, and you know, all but like a kid and a grandma or something died. So it doesn't necessarily take a lot. But at the same time, there's lots of cases of people that ate several, and they were sick, but they survived it. So, oh, weird. It's and cooking problem. it doesn't destroy the Cook, cooking the mushroom doesn't destroy the cooking doesn't at destroy all. a pickling none of that. The, the molecule um, ammonitin is a big cyclopeptide. It's a great big molecule made of a bunch of rings, and they're really really heat stable. You know, they're not like proteins or fats or whatever that break down. So yeah, cooking does it. The only way to know is to know your mushrooms. So a lot of people are like, well, you know, I know from foraying that in learning, you know, the mushrooms that look like this, they're white or they're on wood or I use a silver spoon when I'm cooking and it doesn't turn black. I mean, none of that works. You just have to know your mushroom. We have lots of white mushrooms that look like this deadly one. Lots of white mushrooms here that look like that, that are totally safe. You just have to know what the mushroom is. So anyway, pretty cool test. I can't believe it worked even better than I thought it would work. Yeah. Yay! I am totally astounded. Yeah. That is amazing. We are Wisconsin Mycological Society. Check out our website and social media. We're an affiliate of the North American Mycological Association.